Welcome back. In this lecture, we will begin to learn the working knowledge of basic magnetic theory. We start with the magnetic field and the right hand grip rule. Magnetic field is a basic concept in physics. Let's review it briefly. A magnetic field is defined as an area around a magnet, magnetic object, or an electric charge in which magnetic force is exerted. As shown in the illustration, if we have a bar magnet, a magnetic field appears as lines that extend from the north pole of the magnet and curve around to the south pole. In other words, field lines exit the magnet at its north pole, travel around in the air, and re-enter the magnet through the south pole. Remember, field lines don't start in one place and stop in another. Magnetic field travels in closed paths, which means they will continue to travel in the same path again and again. Firstly, we need to know that the magnetic field can be produced by a current carrying conductor. This is an important concept in magnetics. We can use the Ampere's right hand grip rule to define the relationship between magnetic field and current. This rule applies to both a DC or AC current. If the current direction changes over time, so does the magnetic field. There are two different cases to use the right hand grip rule. They have one thing in common. A magnetic field H is produced when a current I passes through a conductor. For case 1, assume you have a current I shown as a red arrow pointing to the top. You point the sum of your right hand along the conductor in the same direction of the current flow and your fingers will wrap themselves around the conductor in the direction of the magnetic field H, as shown in the blue circle. Note that the magnetic field density B is in the same direction of H. As a result, three lines of current will generate circular magnetic field, as shown in the first case. In the second case, the current flows in a circular loop. It's not a straight line. If we apply the same right hand rule over a small segment of a conductor, for example, you can find small magnetic field lines in the picture. As a result, the total equivalent magnetic field inside the current loop are summed up as shown in the blue arrow pointing to the top. Therefore, circular loop of current will create a straight magnetic field lines, as in the second case. To further simplify the analysis of the second case, we can use the right hand grip rule differently. For current flowing in the loop, we can wrap fingers around the direction of circular loop of current, and therefore the sum is pointing in the same direction of the magnetic field. In the following slides, I will give you more detailed explanation of these two different cases. Here is a more explanation for case 1. This is a current passes through a straight wire. We can put a three-dimensional illustration into two dimensions. On the right-hand side of the conductor with current I, the magnetic field goes into the paper plane, which is annotated as a cross. On the left side of the conductor, the magnetic field comes out of the paper plane, annotated as a dot. Note that the magnetic flux density B is in the same direction of H in this case. Next, we will study the current in two directions. If we look at the conductor from the top view, the circle represents the conductor cross section, and the cross in the circle represents that the conductor has a current flowing into the paper plane. If we use the right hand grip rule, we can find that the magnetic field is in the clockwise direction. Please pause the video and try the right hand rule by yourself. In this case, the fingers should have the clockwise direction. Now we have a current in the opposite direction, flowing out of the paper plane. This is represented by a dot in the circle. As a result, the produced magnetic field is in the counterclockwise direction by using the right hand grip rule. Here is a more explanation about the second case. As shown in the illustration, there is a current passes through a solenoid. 
A solenoid is a type of electromagnet formed by a spiral coil of wire that generates a controlled magnetic field. Let's take a cross section of the solenoid. And we can see that the top windings are flowing into the paper plane, while the bottom windings are flowing out of the paper plane. For each turn of the winding, we can apply the right hand rule and find that the magnetic field inside the windings are all summing up and pointing to the left. Therefore, a strong magnetic field is generated inside the solenoid. In this particular case, we can use the right hand rule differently to simplify the analysis. As shown in the illustration, we can wrap the right hand around the solenoid with the fingers in the same direction of the current and the sum is pointing in the same direction of the magnetic field. I hope you fully understand the right hand grip rule applications in these two different cases. Here is another illustration of case 2. You can go over this reference by yourself. In this picture, iron filings are used to display the magnetic field. When the solenoid is energized, the magnetic field is created. Therefore, iron filings align themselves with the magnetic field for easy illustration. Electrical relay and electromagnets are real-world applications of a solenoid. A mechanical relay is a physical spacing between the coil and contact component in order to achieve a proper level of insulation or insulation distance at output and input. In the second picture, it shows an electromagnet, which is different from a permanent magnet. An electromagnet is a type of magnet in which the magnetic field is produced by an electric current. Electromagnets are made of coils or wires when the electricity is passing through. Basic design of a power relay utilizes an electromagnet, an armature, a spring, and one or more pairs of contacts. In this particular illustration, the contacts are used for high voltage and high current application which are normally open, or people call it NO. When the coil is energized, the contacts become closed and therefore allow a large current to flow through the contacts. Basically, it is uses a small electric current, typically tens of hundreds of milliamps, to operate the contacts of an electromechanical switch that controls a much larger current in a high voltage and high power applications. This is another example showing a power relay. Important parameters are copied and pasted from the datasheet. This is a 100 amp relay for DC and AC applications. The AC contacts can operate at up to 100 amps and 480 volt AC RMS voltage. And you can see the general data and the coil data for this kind of relay. Here is more information about the coil. According to the diagram, pin 3 and 4 are the low voltage control signals for coil. If you look at this wiring diagram, you will see that a coil is in between pin 3 and pin 4. The contacts are in between pin 1 and 2, which is controlled by the coil. The coil specifications is given here. In this case, we are using 12 volt coil voltage. The coil resistance is about 75 ohm plus minus 10 percent. Mass operate voltage is about 9 volt. The minimal holding voltage is about 4.8 volt, and the maximum continuous voltage on the coil is 13.2 volt. If we open the case, you can see the coil between pin 3 and pin 4. As shown in the picture, the coil is not energized, so that the contacts are normally open or we can say the relay is off. Now, I will use a bench power supply to provide 12 volt for the coil. On the left hand side, this picture shows the coil is not energized, so that the relay terminals are off. When we apply a 12 volt over the coil, the armature is attracted by the electromagnet, and therefore, the contacts of relay is turned on. You may notice the power from DC power supply is about 2 watts. The current into the coil is about 0.16 amps. 
the resistance between contacts drops below 10 milliohm. Therefore, the contacts can carry high current up to 100 amps. Next, let me show you the operation of an AC relay using the 12 volt as the coil. Recap, in this lecture, we learned the basics of magnetic field. And also, we studied two different cases to use the right hand grip rule to find the magnetic field generated by the current. The first case is a straight lines of current to create a circular magnetic field. In the second case, we have a circular loop of current to create a straight magnetic field lines inside the solenoid. Here the reference for this lecture. Thank you and see you next time.